Hello everyone and welcome to Bigfoot Odyssey and it's drawing Bigfoot tonight with Larry Batson. Uh, welcome Larry. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yes, well, we need you here. You are the main star of the show tonight. Oh. Um, you are. Uh, we're doing something a little bit different tonight. We've no guests, but we've, we've had this kind of plan for a little bit. Um, tonight, Larry is going to draw Patty. And uh, we are going to be listening to some clips of a very rare interview. Rare because uh, John Green and Bob Gimlin never did an interview. Only, only did this interview with Larry uh, about 11 years ago, was it, Larry? Yeah, I think so. I think so, yeah. yeah. This is the only interview with these two guys together. It's very interesting what they talk about. Uh, I've listened to it tonight and it is fascinating. And I think you're all going to enjoy it. Um, but let's start with not patty cakes, no skunk cake farm, not doing patty cakes. Um, <laughs> um, how did you hear about, when did you first discover the, the, the patty footage? When did it come to you? Uh, well, it was in the Argosy magazine. Uh, so that was, uh, I think, 67, maybe early 68. You know, I saw the Argosy magazine, read all about it, and was intrigued. And looked in, went down to the library, and there wasn't a lot of books then. And then I can remember watching the Mike Douglas show, and Peter Byrne was on there to promote his new book, and I was in search of Bigfoot. So I was off to the bookstore the day it came out and bought one of the first copies from the Indianapolis bookstore. So I, I was, you know, now I'm reading all this stuff. I'm thinking to myself, well, what's the debate? I mean, if we've got, we've already got this much information. I mean, there's all these people who said they've seen one. I mean, that there's, there should be no debate. I mean, but had you heard of, had you heard of this creature before this this footage came out? No, no. So they, this was what really set it off for people. Well, I think it set it off for probably 95% of the people interested in this that have never seen one. Uh, so, you know, it's, it, it's, it, it's truly intriguing. You know, I mean, when you watch that and, and imagine, you know, being there and so forth, it's, uh, it's pretty, it's still, it still catches one's imagination. Yeah, definitely. And and especially listening to Bob talking about being down there at the time in this interview. Oh, um, yeah. I and the beauty wait. of this, I'm sorry. Go on. You're right. The beauty of this is this is before he started going out and doing a lot of these conferences and stuff. In other words, what he was saying was fresh. Now, when, you, when he's at a conference and, and he speaks, and he's a wonderful speaker, he's got a great voice. But, you know, he's done it enough now. It's It's just, you know. He's, it's, it's just comes out, you know, he's just, yeah. he just but uh, that was when it was all fresh. And I don't think he, he and John had talked in a while. And the fact I had, I had booked John Green first. And then I, I was sitting on the couch after I did it all proud of myself. I'm thinking, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder just if Bob Gimlin, because I heard he wasn't, you know, doing anything around Bigfoot. He, it was all, you know, he wasn't interested and in he didn't want nothing to do with it. So I called John and I said, I asked him, so what do you think of this? It's calling. So I did. And uh, he was on board instantly. So yeah. then I called my producer, who at that time was Eric Altman from Pennsylvania. And I told him what, what was going to happen. He just said, oh my gosh. So it was a big deal. It was, a, it was, a, in fact, it, uh, there was one lady in one of the sites that even transcribed the entire interview. Wow. So it was, well, yeah. But uh, still, a lot of people haven't heard it. I mean, it's 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 out there, but you know, I don't think people a lot of people realize it. Well, we're going to listen to it tonight as you're drawing. Uh, we'll we'll play twenty minutes, fifteen minutes, and then uh, have a little discussion about it. Um, so how we're gonna how are you going to do this? You're just doing this from yeah. memory, from what you've seen. Uh, yeah. And, uh, 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 and I'm going to do it just like we've done all the others. It's going to be dead on. It's not going to be like frame 352 or whatever it is, where he's turning around and looking back at him. No, this is, I'm going to do it dead on. So, okay. Uh, and I, I will confess I've done a little pre, to save time, a little pre planning. So, okay, fair uh, enough. Because we don't have a, you know, an eyewitness. Yeah. It's me. It's so. Just yeah. yeah it's all on you tonight but yeah that's uh, i know so this sucks i'm sorry no i don't think it will at all 
Um, I think it's going to be amazing. And I think people are going to enjoy this. Get my camera all figured out here. Maybe a little bit closer. Oh, oh that's it, yeah. There that's we go. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I see you've done a little bit of an outline, but like like you say, this is just from because this is a challenge for you. This is what you enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is a, this is about two minutes of work I've got in it so far. So yeah, well, there's a lot more to come yet. I know. Yeah. That. Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. But this is going to be great. Um, so let me put you on a bit of a bigger screen, and um, why don't we play a bit of this? The start of this interview and okay. um, here we go from the remote jungles of clinton falls indiana i have to say as well <laughs> i didn't recognize your voice at first but <laughs> i guess 11 years ago maybe yeah. things, things obviously changed <laughs> i guess yeah. so <laughs> Crap on. harrison hot springs british columbia in Yakima, Washington. This is Larry Batson, and welcome to My Wild World, and what a special, special program we have tonight. This is going to be, uh, this is going to be a whole lot of fun. You know, for 31 years, I've traveled all over the country doing wildlife lectures with my wild animals, but I've always had a keen interest in a legendary creature that supposedly exists in the wilds of Northern California, Oregon, and Washington, throughout the United States. The legend of Bigfoot or Sasquatch. And tonight, right here on Blog Talk Radio, we have these. All I can say is both of these gentlemen are legendary. The first one, a journalist, written several books on the subject. In fact, the one that I've always kind of considered the, the Bible of Bigfoot, Sasquatch, the Apes Among Us, from Harrison Hot Springs, British Columbia, the legendary. And really a nice guy, <laughs> Mr. John Green. Hi, John. Hi, Larry. <laughs> hey, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. This is quite a privilege. Well, glad to be with you. Um, we're glad you're here. This is going to be fantastic. And tonight, you know, usually we call this the uh, Patterson Gimlin film, but not tonight. Oh, no, it's the Gimlin Patterson film. 50% of the best Bigfoot Sasquatch evidence ever recorded from Yakima, Washington. And folks, you're in for a treat because he doesn't do this very often, Mr. Robert Gimlin. Hello, Bob. Hello there, Larry. Hey, uh, thank you, Larry, for having me aboard. I sure appreciate it. We'll do the best we can here tonight. And I'm sure with John aboard, we'll get it taken care of thoroughly. Well, absolutely, absolutely. You know, uh, well, I think it was three years ago, I was talking to John and, and to Bob. Do you remember we were going to try to make it out that way and do a documentary about, uh, well, it was going to be the 40 years since the, uh, the Gimlin Patterson film was uh, shot. And uh, Robert was so kind, he was going to come down from Yakima, Washington, with three horses, and the three of us were going to ride back into the Bluff Creek area, as close to the film site as we could determine, and build a campfire and talk about that that day in 1967 when Robert Gimlin and Roger Patterson were lucky enough to get on film for a few seconds a, a Sasquatch. And, you know, I was really looking forward to that. And you, and you got ill right after that, Bob. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was my uh, with my job with the horses, or, or what you might call it. I don't know whether you call it a job or or a pleasure, or fun, or whatever it is. But you know, with these horses, um, with big animals like that, that uh, don't always do what a person uh, thinks that they should do. Uh, sometimes you get a few injuries, and I've I've had my share of them over the years, but. Uh, you know, I wouldn't ever change it. So uh, I, I deal with horses every day, and, and consequently, uh, I do get a few broken bones now and then, and a few bruised spots. But uh, I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy the the horses, what what you can teach them, and 
and get them so that other people can use them uh, to their advantage for pleasure or whatever they want to do with them, you know. Well, you know, I, we were talking the other night. I work with wild animals, and I've also worked with horses, and horses are nothing but work. There's well, they are lot. definitely a lot of work, uh, and if you, if you don't enjoy it, uh, you, you shouldn't do it, I don't reckon, because, uh, you know, I have people all the time that, that they, they have horses, but they, they really don't understand them, they don't enjoy it, so I just I tell them, well, why don't you just get a motorcycle or a scooter or something like that, and, but they, you know, they, they like to be able to uh, uh, have a live creature that they can pet and call their own and, and see if they can dominated. I think that's probably some of the answers to some of this deal, you know, of these horse people that they don't understand. Anyway, that's, I like horses. I deal with them and, and I understand them pretty good. Uh, John, do you, do you remember, remember the first time that you met uh, uh, Bob Gimlin? Oh, sure. Uh, the, the first public showing of the movie was at the University of British Columbia. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'd seen it at uh, Roger's brother-in-law's house, but uh, Roger just arrived from California, and, and Bob had had to, uh, I guess, head off to look after his horses. Anyway, he wasn't there. So the first time I met Bob was when he came up to Vancouver to, when they were showing the movie there. How many uh, people were in the room when that movie was was shown at the uh, University of British Columbia? Uh, 25, 35, 40, something like that. And yeah. then there was a, um, a more public showing later. Uh, is, is it correct that uh, Bob Titmus was in that room as well? Oh, yes. Yeah. My understanding, when well, my conversations with him, is that when he saw the movie that he thought this was all over. That that was the that was the prime piece piece of evidence, and that it, there it was. Did you get that impression from him? Oh, I don't recall, but uh, you know, you, you might well think that uh, he, he was he was pretty. Now the scientists, there were scientists in the room, correct? Yes. How how many times do you think that they sat there and watched the film? Well, it was run through several times. But, mm -hmm. uh, there was really o only only one uh, top zoologist there, and he continued to be skeptical. Mm -hmm. did, did that, um, so did you think from the very beginning that was going to kind of kill the deal, that, that no one was going to believe that uh, the film uh, Robert and Roger put together? They had, or I, I don't want to put together the film, uh, was uh, a hoax. Uh, what I remember is that uh, Rennie de Hinden and I were concerned that uh, Roger not take off and go trotting around with the film, showing it to people that, that he should insist on them coming. Uh, to see him and to see the film, because uh, you know uh, Yakima is cowboy country, and that's that's the way that uh, Roger was dressed, and uh, we were well aware that uh, he wasn't going to be taken seriously at the Smithsonian or the American Museum, places like that. Whereas if they met him on his home ground, it would be different. So absolutely. However, uh, that advice wasn't taken, and uh, the advice we failed to give him because we didn't know any better is to quit running the film through a cheap projector and scratching it. You know, it's, I mean, you should never run an original film of that importance at all. You know, just get copies off it, but we didn't know those things. Did, who, who made the decision, Bob, who was going to be the cameraman that day? Did uh, Roger always have the camera, or was that... Well, yes, there was There was not a decision at all, because I didn't have anything to do with cameras. Uh, basically, I was 
the horse person there, you right. know, on this, uh, Roger Ad, who was riding his horse. But, you know, I was just there to, to help Roger whatever uh, whatever needed to be done. And my my uh, point was, or reason that I was down there is Roger asked me to take him down there. And I had the equipment to take him down there with the truck and, 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 and you know, the means to get him down there. And so Roger had uh, the camera with him all the time. I, I never carried the camera ever because I don't even I don't even take pictures to this day with a camera. So, and I know very little bit about cameras. Uh, so consequently, Roger had had this camera. I assume uh, quite a while before he went down there. Did um, here's a question. Did, is, is there times since that film has been made that you had wished that when Roger was changing that film after he had just uh, filmed the Sasquatch, then maybe his jack would have fallen off of his lap and had been exposed and there would have never been a Roger Patterson, Bob Gimlin film? Well, you know, I never thought anything about it because I, I didn't, you know, everything was happening so rapidly at that point in time. and. And I wanted to go on and see wh which way the creature went and, and, and just say it again, you know. Uh, but Roger didn't want me to leave because he wasn't sure. Uh, there was just this one and the footprints about uh, three miles from where this was at, that, that uh, tank that they put in in the fresh dirt, there were three different sizes of footprints. So he told me later the reason he didn't want me to leave was because he didn't know whether the other two was in the area and he didn't have a horse. So uh, to get his horse caught up before we went to go ahead and follow which way the thing, the creature went, he wanted to have his horse. So that's what, that's what that was kind of all about. What, what was your, okay, what was your impression when uh, you first saw this thing? Well, my first impression was that, yeah, these things really do exist because up until that point, I wasn't a total skeptic or I wouldn't have been down there, but I had never seen a, a footprint in the dirt or in the soil of any type. The only things that I had seen was plaster casts that Roger had shown me and the little cassette tapes that he played of different people that uh, either had a, a minor in, uh, encounters with them or had cast footprints. So consequently, I just was not sure that they existed. Uh, I knew they must exist, but I was, you know, I was kind of show me and show me, and I will believe it. And so when this thing was standing there by the creek, I thought, oh my God, they really do exist. And and even at that point in time, you wonder. Just so many things go through your mind so rapidly about it, and of course it was moving away from us just just immediately, and and you wonder, well, just there's so many things, you know, that happened so quick, and it didn't, it wasn't that long that Roger said, uh, "I'm out of town," you know, and so then then we thought, I thought, well, he probably didn't get any in with because he kind of stumbled and fell as he ran across the creek. And he didn't. He wasn't even sure that he got any good film footage of it. Who was closer to it, you or, or Roger? Roger was closest to it at the beginning because he was riding in front of me. Mm -hmm. What now? Did you get a good look at the face? Well, a fairly good look, yeah, because it was looking at us, or was looking across our way when I first saw it. And then when it turned and walked away, and then one time when I got rode across the creek and got down off the horse, it turned in stride and looked back at me. So I saw, you know, part of, part of the face, or pretty much most of it. Your impressions was it was it more human-like or ape-like? Well, I thought it was human-like the way the muscle movement. I, I had seen, you know, uh, primates in the zoos and so forth, but I'd never seen anything like that before. And the, the muscle mass that it had and, and walking upright like a human was, uh, in my opinion, it was more human-like than animal-like. John? It's fascinating, isn't it? Can't, um, 
imagine what they were thinking when they were there at the time yeah i mean it's uh and you can hear that uh bob hasn't grown tired of talking on the subject because he's been he had been away from it for a while so what you're hearing is very candid and uh very fresh i mean that's the main thing about it but, uh, they just did a it was just a powerful show together it was yeah. it was unbelievable for me definitely and, and as the interview goes on they, they, it feels like they relax even more and they're just literally just talking from from the heart aren't they just how they feel how they felt and um it gets it gets interesting yeah That's we it, it it covers everything in the big field per se it was related to the patterson film i think for sure yeah definitely uh that's really coming on the eyes are amazing yeah i'll tell you, i can get going a little quicker when i already have like pre-skips done yeah so, and i don't need much of a pre-script just a little little marks and yeah we can, we can move right along well that's the you know the difficulty i don't think some people get of going from a description and putting it on paper when it's somebody else i mean it's very difficult Are you, even people trying to describe what they're trying to describe is difficult you know and how you manage to translate it is is amazing well uh i it's just my i guess it's my god-given talent and, uh, and that's the way i prefer to use it and uh, doing these programs being involved with this for about 50 years, I've just, you know, uh, it's, it's very exciting for me to do these these sketches and so forth. Yeah, definitely. And um, people don't really know, but you, you you play around with them afterwards. I mean, yeah. it, might, it might be a few days later, you message me and you go, I've just been doodling, you know, I've been, been doing a little bit more um, with them. I've just got a little kind of example of, uh, how you progress with these images uh because two hours really you, you know is all it's very, yeah it's not very long <laughs> no it's not very long to add depth and more detail and as you can see larry does it um he spends a lot of time trying to you know he remembers the details that were said throughout the show even though he doesn't always get it up on the t at the time because like you say two hours isn't a long time but he certainly makes up for it later uh as you can see with these uh images here as he just puts pencil to paper again a lot of fun that one yeah, yeah that one really that was the last one we did that was donnie miller's um Bigfoot. Wow, those cheekbones are really sticking out. Um, right, we'll play a little bit more, shall we? Sure. This uh, interview. Um, here we go. How um, much after the fact, after they uh, filmed this, did you get down to Bluff Creek? I wasn't able to go there till the following year. Okay. Bob Titmus went, went down there pretty much right away and uh, Tim McLaren was in there that fall also the time I got there you could still see a few of the footprints but after that long yeah oh yeah wow well you know they didn't have any good shape but you could see where the thing had been striding along but unfortunately uh, the area that's the best part of the film well, I guess those are would be among the uh, the footprints that Bob Titmus cast. Between him and Roger, uh, at least a dozen footprints were cast, and so they were wiped out. The uh, and and Bob got down there what seven eight days after uh, uh, Bob and Roger were there. Uh, it might have been even a little longer. Because he didn't go down there until after he'd seen the film in Vancouver. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Bob, uh, that night you guys were still camped in the area? Yes. Yeah, we were camping in the same area that we camped in when we first got there. 
and you and it, and there was a storm coming in. And you decided to go back and cover the footprints up. We, yeah, it was. Yes, it was. It started raining. This was early in the morning, and uh, uh, I don't remember the exact time, but I'd say it was around four o'clock because it was still still dark when I got. You know, in October it doesn't get light. So about six thirty or seven, so it was still dark when I went out to saddle the horse and and started to ride up there, uh, you know, to get the bark off the trees to cover some of those footprints. Well, originally, I had got cardboard boxes from the Al Hawkins Variety Store on our way back. And I say on our way back, that was from where I took Roger over there to get the film sent up here to the athlete. And um, so I picked up quite a few cardboard boxes. And when we got back there, it was early, you know, probably 10, 10 or so in the evening, maybe a little bit later. It was a full moon, full, just like a big old harvest moon. And then when I heard that start sprinkling on top of the truck, that rain, uh, I said, I, I got up and shook Roger's foot and I said, hey, it's starting to rain. We've got to do something about them tracks. And he said, oh, it, it, don't, it ain't going to rain. Bobby said, it was a clear sky last night. Remember that moon? I said, well, yeah, we sat and talked for quite a long time after we got back and it was clear and so then I laid back down for a few minutes and the rain started coming down pretty good. So I said, hey, Roger, and he went back to snoring and sleeping. So I thought, God dang, this guy can sleep through anything. You know, but, you know we were all, we were tired, really tired. But I thought, God, this, this has got to do something about this, you know. So I got out, went outside, and but I had laid those cardboard boxes outside. Uh, of the truck when we went in to, to go to bed that night. And Roger was sleeping up in the overshot that goes out over the cab, and I was sleeping down on the on the bed, of the, you know, on the bed, because the, the bed of the truck was 11 feet by 7 feet wide. Anyway, um, so I got up and looked at them cardboard boxes, and they were just socks, you know, they, they got wet, and I, I knew there was no sense in even trying to pull any of them up. So I didn't, I didn't even know what I was going to do for sure, but I knew that there were some dead trees up there. And so I thought, well, I'll ride up there and figure out something. And when I got up there, and then I just started pulling the bark off them trees the best I could and covering as many tracks as I could before it really started raining, you know, really coming down. The time I got back down to the truck, it was really coming down big time. And then, of course, it was getting daylight by then, and that creek. We were across, we were on the foreside of the creek, and the creek that normally was like 18, 20 inches deep, and three or four feet across, it was almost, it was over about two foot deep and about eight, ten feet across. So it was coming down, not that it was coming down off them hills, you know, the rain was, the water was coming down off them hills rapidly, and I knew I had to get on the other side of that creek with that truck because it was just a two wheel drive two-wheel drive from uh, Dooley truck, and so I did. Did you have any... Uh, but that's how... Go ahead. Excuse, excuse me, that's how, oh, I, me. how come I went up to cover the tracks. Did you have any apprehension of going back there, cover those tracks up in the dark, after you had just seen uh, the Sasquatch that day? Or did it even enter your mind? Well, no, not really, because... That's the cowboy in you. You know, I was still just kind of amazed at what, what happened that day. And and I'm not much of a guy to to chicken out on things. See, I've always been kind of a daring person all my life. And I guess it kind of shows when the chips are down whether a guy's going to be able to get something done or not. And that was my main thought is because Roger had called... Uh, the track people that had track dogs up in Canada to come down there uh, and uh, so I figured if they didn't have anything to check out and go by then, then there wasn't going to be any tracking at all and so that was my first response to that fact that, that something had to be had to be able to be shown so that there's evidence there to get some dogs going or whatever they had to do because I didn't know anything about these track dogs and I didn't know who the guy was that had them 
uh, he had, uh, Roger told me when he called earlier that evening from from Al's place, Al's store down there, that this guy, I think the guy's name was McCauley or something like that, he, he maintained that these dogs would track anything, anywhere, and said that they were German Shepherd breed. Well, I never knew that much about German Shepherd dogs. See, I figured they had to be a bloodhound or, or a scent hound of some type. But this, this gentleman had told Roger that these dogs would track anything, anywhere, as long as he put them on the fence. And so, therefore, I knew that it had to do something about these tracks or that. What I figured, I didn't know much about track dogs or anything like that, but also figured if, if they're going to have anything to go by, they got to they gotta see something. So, uh, how did, did, did they finally arrive? How did they do? No, no, well, they, they, well... Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, John. Tell talk because John knows a little more about that than I do. Okay. Yeah, I, I was the one that uh, got McCullough to come down to California with the dogs. There's some tracks on Onion Mountain back at the end of August that year. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I didn't know that. So. Yeah, and uh, the dog couldn't do anything with those tracks. They were too old. And and oh, then. Uh, okay. And I got uh, a call on the, the day after we got back to say there were more tracks, new tracks. So I went down again with the dog. This time my color didn't come, but the fellow that worked for him handling the dog. But the, uh, again, it, although we flew down, we got there within 24 hours, but Still, the dog wasn't able to pick up anything to follow. So, you know, I appreciate Bob's effort, but there wouldn't have been any chance. So. Has, has there ever been an instance where dogs have done any good uh, tracking one of these things? Not that I know of. The uh, hunting dogs won't, won't follow them. They're, you know, they're trained to track certain animals. Stay away from others. Uh, and there's quite a bit of, uh, well, stories they are, but uh, suggest that the dogs are instinctively afraid of these things. When, uh, Bob, when you had this thing, you had your, your rifle drawn, is that correct? Yes, I had it in my hand. I didn't... But Larry, there's, I don't know, should clarify exactly what drawn and and what holding it is, there's a, in my opinion, there's a, a somewhat of a difference there, you know. Okay. Uh, to me, if you say drawn, that means bring it up to your shoulder and point it at whatever you intend to shoot. Well, I never did that. I held the rifle in my hand. And the only reason that being is I knew if I had to make a shot, I probably couldn't make it off a horse jumping around. So uh, that's why I got off and stood on the ground. Had you and Roger discussed uh, if you had the opportunity that you would shoot one? Well, we had kind of in a way and had not much because uh, when we talked about that, that was uh, well, probably a year or so before that. And, and uh, Roger said, you know, uh, so many people are, are shooting at these creatures and, and I think that's the wrong thing to do. And I said, well, if they're human type, definitely the wrong thing to do and we never said anything about it down there of course but uh, I, I'm not one to be shooting at anything unless I feel that uh, if, you know if I'm out game hunting naturally I, I used to hunt but I haven't hunted for quite a few years now but but um, I didn't feel any threat at all so I didn't have it I, there was no need for me to even bring the rifle up to my shoulder I just thought if I did if the thing turned and came at me viciously, then I would have shot a test. Right. There's no question in my mind. You know, as big and powerful as it was, I knew that I wouldn't have a chance on a horse. So I stepped down off the horse and just held the rifle in my hand. Have you read any of the uh, analysis that, that stated how tall they, they think that that particular creature was? One more time, Larry. I didn't hear, hear, hear. Uh, there's been recently, uh, Bill Munns has done an analysis of the film. 
and John will correct me if I'm wrong on this, where I believe he's decided that the creature was about seven six. Would you consider that accurate from your vantage point? Well, yuck. Yeah, I do. I, I never really thought about it that much until it's been brought up many times. Because the first time, of course, when I first saw it, I was stepping up on a horse. Right. And uh, I never really even give that a whole lot of thought. It was just a big, big creature. And, of course, I underestimated the height because of the bulk, I'm, I'm sure, because I was asked shortly after that. And, and of course, I'm not a very big guy, so I figured, uh, they said, well, what do you think it weighs uh, 300 pounds or so? I said, well, yeah, that, that probably is about right. Well, then, you know, the more I thought about this, the thought about the muscle the mass of this thing, it had to weigh more than that because I realized it don't take too big of a guy to weigh 250 pounds. So this thing had so much more muscle mass than any human being that I'd ever seen. And so the height, I never really give it a whole lot of thought. But when I talked to Bill and the way he uh, reasoned it for the different lenses and everything made sense to me and and I thought that he said uh, six foot four and three quarters or six foot five and three quarters something like that I'm not quite sure now I remember him saying it at the at the roundup up here in Yakima when I first met Bill but I don't remember the exact height I know it was a bit over seven foot how many times had, had, had you and Roger been in that area before before that day? Well, well I'd year. never been there. You'd never that been there That was the first time. No, I'd never been there before. Uh, and I, I don't know whether... I think Roger had been down there somewhere in that area. Yes, John? Yeah, John, was it was it Bob a Titmus that... Uh, I don't know how you should say it. Uh, told him about that area, or is that how, how that came about, or... No, no, uh, uh, Ivan Sanderson had written about it in True Magazine, and uh, that's what got Roger interested. And he'd been down there in 1964 and got a, a very nice uh, cast of a print, not not the one creature in the movie, but the original Bigfoot. I don't know how much time he spent down there, but I know he was down there that time. Well, how did Roger put it to you, Bob, for that we're, we're going to go look for Bigfoot? Well, the reason uh, Roger came to my place was that somebody down there, and and I, I I don't recall who he told me called him and told him that there was fresh tracks in the in the new dirt where they were starting to they wanted to start building logging roads back in that area up above the up above where we camped quite a ways up there and they had put a tank in there and i first thought it was a fuel tank but then somebody said later that it was a water tank but anyway it was a tank that they put in there when they came back to work on uh, tuesday morning i think they said i think they put it in there on a friday evening on labor day weekend and on the tuesday morning when they come back to work there was three different sizes of footprints all around there in the dirt and then when Roger came down here uh, and wanted me to take him down there, uh, well, I couldn't get away from here right away, you know, because I, I was working construction, and so it took me a while to get uh, get a leave from the job and get somebody to take care of my animals here because I had quite a few animals at that time, cows and horses, and, and my wife was working full-time jobs, so she, she couldn't do it, so I had to get somebody to take care of things here before I could take Roger down there. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, that's, um, I can, I still have the, I have the Argosy magazine that appeared, in, um, you know, this, from the very beginning when this all came about, when it first brought to my attention, <laughs> I was just a child. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's still, uh, did you think, Forty years later, people would still be talking about this. Your wildest <laughs> you imagination. Are, are you talking to me? Or yeah. John? Well, both. Of well, you. if you're talking to me, I'm trying to figure out forty years later why they're trying to come up with these phony stories about it. You know, after <laughs> they've seen the film and 
and uh, there's been so many people analyze it over and over and over and and still months it is still on it and and then there's this fellow mk davis is well it gets interesting there and we'll play it we'll play it in a little bit um your image is amazing oh well thank you that is really coming to life she's starting to yeah uh, you can hear in the voices, can't you, how frustrated they are with um, a lot of the claims that were made. Yes, yes, and so no, when they get, yeah, when they get into it, it's really funny. It is, it is, and um, like he says, you know, forty years later, now fifty years later, mm -hmm. people are still, you know, doing the same thing. Um, this, this subject is not going to end, is it? Until we actually have one of these things maybe yeah uh, yeah then, yeah then that, that's what it, that's you know that's what it's gonna hate to say it's gonna take but i've had a long time to do it and it hadn't been done so we'll see yeah. uh, that's that's it's yeah it's perplexing for sure it's very aggravating sometimes mm. someone's asked a question here don't know if you have the answer mark ledford says Bob, did the horses run away do you know if the horse uh, uh, Rogers did right yeah, they had to go find Rogers but uh, Bob stayed with his horse so yeah he, he wanted to, like he said he wanted to go track it so yeah, that's, um, yeah. but uh, yeah uh, but um, Rogers horse did run they did you know they they were good they were good good horses see we were gonna do that documentary in fact Roger was gonna bring Three horses down to Bluff Creek, and we we're going to ride back to the film site and just build a campfire and talk about that day. And I thought that would have been an unbelievable documentary. You know, been real. And uh, the people that I was working with that produced it, they saw Legend Meets Science, and they told me this is there's a quarter million dollars worth of effects in that in that film. We can't do anything like that. I'm saying, well, I I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. I want to do something a little bit more organic. And they I couldn't sell them on the idea. But yeah, I had it all worked out. Oh um, John was gonna come down to Bluff Creek and we were gonna go back there and, and talk about it. So really I'm really all the hours and time I spent on it was it was quite exasperating. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, imagine was, that would have been incredible, wouldn't it, to have done yeah. that? Well, he said, and, and John uh, said, well, if you're going to do that, you need to hit some of these other spots that I've written about, like the one side him where the guy watched two of them going through a rock pile, and they're picking up these rocks trying to hunt golden mantle ground squirrels for food. He says, what was amazing is they're, they're throwing the rocks as they're digging out this, these squirrels. They're not even paying attention that they're going to hit one another with them. I mean, it's... <laughs> And he said, the spot's still there. He says, that nobody ever filled it back in or anything. So, uh, yeah, and that was one of the things, we, places we were going to check out. But we didn't get to. Then yeah. years later, John, with a scooping cast, he called me. He said, I want you to take this all over the country and share it with scientists so they can have a chance to see it in person. They had a, they had a copy they'd made, him and Rick Knoll. And uh, I, I couldn't leave here and do that. But that would have been interesting. That would have been, yeah. Yeah. So never been down there then. No. Never been there. No. Uh -uh. Uh, Maybe one day. I don't know. It's you know, I'm sure I've I've lots of people know lots of people that have, and they said it's really uh, it's almost spiritual when you get mm. back in there. So. I mean, how many has there been any more sightings down there? I mean, I've not even thought. No. Well, there are, yeah, there have been sightings in the area, mm -hmm. and but. Uh, my theory is that the place is, you know, it's become a regular hiking destination. So there's a lot more people going down through there than there was years ago. So, you know, and there's a question, maybe they're not even in the area anymore. So, yeah, which could very well be that, you know, like exactly. all this traffic, they could have decided they, didn't, they were out of there. So, definitely. It was, yeah. Yeah. Um, we're doing something with this image tonight, aren't we? We are. We are. Do you want to 
tell people or shall I? Go ahead. Okay, so I showed you before the video where Larry tweaks his, his pictures, he carries on doodling. We might not complete this tonight, but he's going to give it a good go. Um, but this image is going to be available as a digital print signed by Larry. Uh, and all donations, obviously, goes, goes to Larry's uh, wildlife there that he's keeping. And it's just $10. If you want a copy of this image, when Larry's finally finished with it, um, you're welcome to, to grab a copy. I'm going to put a link to Larry's um, PayPal in the description. The, well, it is in the description. I'll put it in the chat. Um, this is like a one of a kind, isn't it, really? Yeah. Uh, I'm definitely going to get one. Oh. And yeah, absolutely. I think this is going to be really unique. It is unique. And um, I, I can't wait to see the finished results. I know it'll probably be a few couple of days, but I think this is going to look amazing. And I'm sure people would, would like a copy of this. Um, I don't know anyone who's done, Patty. Um I'm sure, I'm sure there is, obviously, but... Oh, yeah, they have, yeah. But, they, but they've always just drawn from the angles we see in the film. Yeah. So I have to use a little of my own, I don't know, imagination or... Yeah. This is basically what I do when we have the guests on, the eyewitnesses. You know, I have to read between the lines, so... That's it. That's, That's kind it. of what I do here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Donald, Donald Fuller says he's in. Uh, I had a feeling it would be um, because these are these, these are amazing. Uh, well, when thank you. you. Well, I've always been impressed with you, Larry. Uh oh. Yeah, well, you know, you've you've taught me a lot. I did my little animal, you know, learning to draw with you, art, animal art classes, and uh, you, you know, you, you inspired me to carry on with my art and keep going. Sure. So, yeah, absolutely. It's very therapeutic. Uh, I know you get a lot out of it as well with your Parkinson's. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah. My wife said, uh, well, you're just a, uh, nothing during the day, but you get ready to do this drawing thing, so you just perk right up. Oh, that's I, didn't great. Even, I, don't, I didn't even realize it. Right. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, and I know you like to... Um, not know anything about what you're drawing. I know with this one it's a little bit different, but um, we've got a great guest next week, haven't we, Richard? Yes. Who um, had a great sighting of one. Uh, he, he sent me some images, but I don't I don't send them to Larry because, like I say, he doesn't want to see it. The challenge for him is to be able to take the you know the description from the witness and, and put it onto paper through his pencil. Um. Right, should we um, carry on with this interview? Because it's sure. like getting a bit juicy now. Uh oh. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if people want to listen to the rest of it, I will play it. Started out doing some things, and then he ended up doing some really, really wild and bizarre things about it. And so uh, it just amazes me that, uh, that that these people are still hammering hammering this after 40 some years you know why just like one of the russian scientists said what is wrong with the people over there in that part of the country <laughs> can't they understand or believe what they see or, or this, is there a reason why or they're just making a few bucks or what what's the story on it well i can't answer that because you know i don't understand it either well john if you don't mind fill us in on the um the craziness behind what supposedly you <laughs> well uh, i think maybe john should address that first if he feels like it and then yeah, go ahead. <laughs> i get a little bit wild about it so you can be wild this is the internet uh, all right well i i i had uh, been hearing of this childish tale of slaughter of sasquatches and Pretty hard to take a thing seriously, but I, I never uh, thought that, that it, it in any way involved me. Uh, but then uh, 
back in, I guess, in August, I got a letter from or an email from Al Hodgson saying that I ought to know what a guy named David Pilates was saying about me. Uh, and he, he forwarded Pilates' email in, in which it said that uh, Bob and I were, this is a direct quote, harboring a very, very dark secret, really. <laughs> what in the... And, and Al Hodgson, uh, you know, he, he knew it was nonsense. He wanted, the, the gist of his message to me was, could I do anything to stop this? So I did. But uh, in the process, uh, Pilates denied ever having said anything like that, not knowing that I had it in print. And uh, they were uh, claiming that uh, Pilates was was claiming none, none of this came direct from uh, M.K. Davis. Uh, what he says is, I actually got my hands on a fairly old copy of the PG film, full framed with segments on it nobody has seen. It is in the expert's hands, and many of our impressions are what actually occurred playing out. I actually believe that John Green and Gimlin are harboring a very, very dark secret. Well, what? So, uh, well, I, I had had uh, some dealings with Pilates. I've been getting on fine. And, and, uh, this kind of set me back. I got in touch with him. And, uh, finally, it dawned on me that, that this the fairly old copy they were talking about uh, was a copy of... Uh, a patched together film that Rennie and I had used when we were traveling showing the film. And where I'm supposed to be involved uh, was actually on this trip with the tracking dog. And it turned out that nearly all of the evidence, not quite all, but nearly all the evidence that M.K. Davis claimed proved that uh, the whole family of Sasquatches had been massacred and, and buried there. Uh, came from Rennie's film when he and I were down there. Nothing to do with a Patterson film at all. Several weeks earlier and not in the same place. And uh, so then they, they put great stress on the fact that uh, the film showed that I was walking around with a big movie camera on my shoulder. And uh, the, the copy, the, the stills that I saw that and we're demonstrating this with were very poor. And, uh, th there was something on my shoulder, and I couldn't tell what it was. So finally, I went and dug up this old film, a copy of the film that Rennie and I used to show to, to see if uh, I took my hand away from my shoulder, which I did. And all I was holding was a little 35 millimeter camera. And, uh, but in the meantime, in Pilates, he claimed that his experts had identified the, his camera 99% sure what it was. I presume it was a Bolex, a huge thing anyway. They showed a picture of it. Now, I don't know whether Pilates ever saw the film at all or whether he only saw images that M.K. Davis had made. Uh, it's hard to imagine that anybody with a police background who had the whole film wouldn't have run it for a few more seconds and found out, you know, what it was I had on my shoulder. Well, as a matter of fact, it's, it's almost impossible to imagine anybody with any uh, experience of investigating anything taking this story seriously in the first place. And uh, having done so, uh, investigated it and not trying to defend it and well I I get almost incoherent when I try to figure out what earth they were up to. Anyway that's um, you know the, the red pool of blood which isn't red and isn't blood and, and the, uh, the huge camera that I documented the slaughter with 
Oh, yeah, and Bob Titmus is there with a rifle. Well, Bob Titmus was in Canada at the time. I don't know exactly what he was doing because I wasn't in touch with him. He certainly wasn't there. It just got totally and unbelievably out of hand. Uh, this film that uh, N.K. Davis is supposed to find all these wonderful things in, uh, it's actually just a little side trip that, that we made when uh, the tracks we were really interested in were uh, up on the mountain ridge, and there were hundreds of them. But we heard that the same two individuals had made tracks down in the, in the creek bed as well. And so we went down there, but where the tracks had been uh, was around some trailers that some loggers had been living in during the week. And uh, they would go out on the weekend, and this particular weekend they came back and these big tracks were around the trailers. So they hitched up and hauled the trailers out of there. So there were very, very few tracks left. And so, you know, we were there, we searched around. I did get one good photograph of a track and a couple of bad casts of poor tracks. But, you know, it was a, just a very minor part of what we had done. And uh, here, all of a sudden, this is supposed to be part of the Patterson movie that has been hidden from the public all these years because it contained the proof that uh, Bob and Roger... Well, it started off Bob and Roger, but uh, later on, uh, you know, the story's taken various forms, and the most extreme one I've heard is that uh, Weyerhaeuser, who was a big logging outfit, but as far as I know, had never been in that area, had hired Bob Titmus to uh, kill all, all the uh, Sasquatches in Bluff Creek so that the environmentalists wouldn't stop them from logging there. And it just... You know, just uh, uh, and uh, then of course Rennie and I and Bob Titman went on for well, with them till the end of their lives and me for 40 years uh, trying to find uh, physical proof that these things exist when we're supposed to know where s several of them lie buried I mean, uh, what, what do you think uh, uh, the Indian would have that if he was still around and this all came down, we probably couldn't say it on the radio. <laughs> yes, I, I, I. <laughs> <laughs> See for a later hour. He'd have to finish spitting first. <laughs> he, he, he was he was special, wasn't he? Yes. <laughs> not not always in a good way, but definitely special. <laughs> So, so, Bob, um, uh, when did you uh, first find out about this this story that was uh, circulating around the world? Well, you know, I heard. Are you talking to me now? Yes, yeah, I am. Anyway, I I first heard about that, and I thought, well, you know, this must be another one of these wild stories that's come out, you know. And I didn't pay much attention to it then. But then uh, a, a, good, a good friend of mine called, and I, you know, um, and he told me that back there, I think it was in Ohio or Pennsylvania or somewhere, then he they was come up with these statements. And and I thought, well, what in the world was wrong with this guy? He must have been drinking some pretty powerful stuff to make accusations like that. But it all came, I guess, came about as he called me. He was he was here in Yakima area, in the area somewhere. Him and a gentleman named uh, Don Monroe, I think it's Don Monroe. Uh, yeah, it's not Bob Monroe, it's Don Monroe. And he wanted to meet me and show me all the enhancements that he'd done, he said, for the film footage. So I said, okay, well, I, I had a real bad hernia problem, man, and it was out there like a softball in my left growing and so I said, well, yeah, I can meet you out here in the little place, a little restaurant thing called Ranch House Restaurants, about a mile away from my residence. And if you guys want to meet me there, I'll, I'll look at the film that you got there and, and uh, you can tell me what you got. Well, 
So we went in this little restaurant. And of course, I know the people. They're my neighbors, and I eat there quite often. And I asked the little gal, I said, is it okay if we set up the projector uh, um, and show this film back here in this little room? Uh, off to one side, which it had been used for a conference room at times, it wasn't very big. She said, yeah, Bob, it, it's okay, but he said, she said, how long will it be? And I, I asked him, okay, Davis, I said, how, how long will this take? And he said, oh, not very long. So she said, okay. And so uh, we sat there and kind of just went on and on and on. We had all this red in the film. And, and so finally we ordered something to eat. I, I said, well, you know, we better order something to eat because, you know, this little restaurant's not used to people just sitting around in here. Not a very big place anyway. And so uh, we ordered. And, of course, today, when Kay was busy with trying to explain all this stuff about the film, and I was sitting there hurting with this hernia, you know. And so he said to me, do you see that red there in the corner? And I said, well, yes, I see that red. And about that time, this old hernia... So I kind of pushed down on it and put put my head down. Well, come to find out that he his statement was that when he showed me that red, uh, I cringed and just showed guilt of that I'd shot all these. He didn't say nothing about me shooting them, or I'd have set him straight right there, or probably grabbed him by the nap of the neck, even with a hernia, and threw him out the front door. Uh, of course, I'm not a violent person, but that would get my dandruff up pretty good, you see. So anyway, and this Monroe sat there and kind of grinned, and I didn't think anything about it until when I heard about what he come up with this story. And shortly after that, a guy by the name of Joe Bielard, which I'd met a few years ago and didn't trust all that much anyway because he, he lied to me about some pictures, and he sent me, a, 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 I think it's 12, 14 pages of all of the, the dark secret that I've been harboring for 42 years. And, and I looked at that and uh, I wrote some pretty nasty words on it and sent it back to him. I thought, these guys are loony tunes. You know, what in the world has happened in this, this field? They're, they're nuts. They're completely insane. And, and, and M.K. Davis was ahead of the whole darn thing. And so I don't, I didn't really know how far it went. I kind of left it. So I called this M.K. Davis and I asked him, I said, what in the world was wrong with you? Did, did you go off the deep end? And he said, oh, I, he started kind of apologizing to me about it. I said, well, I wasn't supposed to get out what I said. It's supposed to be with in confidence. I said, in confidence with 300 people listening to you? And he said, well, it wasn't supposed to be that way. He said, well, I'm just going to get completely out of it. He said, is that upsetting you? I said, it's not only upsetting me. I said, when I heard, first heard about this, if you if you were just doggone lucky you weren't standing in front of me, mister. And, you know, and I, like I said, I'm not a violent person, but I can get to my dandruff up a little bit. And so this was kind of went on, and he said, I'm going to get out of it. Well, he lied to me, too, again. So he's just turned around from what I understand now from different people. That he got this David Pilates into it and some other people too, uh, some lady down south or something. I'm not even sure how, how far it's all gone. Then when I heard about them trying to say that John and Renee and, and we were all down there together, I thought they're not even, they're, they're completely insane. There was nobody down there but Roger and I. And, uh, you know, and it was a different time of the year. If they'd have just looked at the film, they could tell that when John and Renee was down there, it was summertime. And when Roger and I was down there, the leaves were turning red. It was fall. It was the last part of October, just, you know, the 20th of October. So it, then it started getting me a little bit upset and a little riled. But then I settled down and figured, oh, well, what the heck? Nobody's going to believe that anyway. Well, the next thing I know, this David Pilates is, is uh, you know, talking about it. And, and the other person and this Joe Bielard and, and I didn't know who all else because I, I had just kind of let it go on down the road a little bit, you know. So then I, I thought, they had going to, and I got to talk to John a little bit about it. And I thought, gee whiz, this thing is going, it's like a, a wildfire. And these crazy people, the people are actually believing them. So that's, then I cooled back down and figured, oh, well, the heck of it, the heck with it, you know, let them have their fun or whatever, but as long as they just, the people leave me out of it and I get these calls saying well, M.K. Davis said this and they said well they're nuts they're looney tunes you, 
you, you've missed the proof of it all, little Bob. They've, they've proved that we were both there together. Because they've, they've got a picture in which there's a what, what they have identified as a pile of horse shit in, in one of Rennie's pictures. So that proves that you were there because there was a horse there. Oh, that's... Yeah, well, yeah, that's that probably couldn't have, they couldn't identify a horse shit from a rock, you know? <laughs> well, well... Well, we'll probably have to get the swear jar out for that. Um, it's a great interview, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's amazing. They're really uh, letting it out, how they feel about uh, how things were done. Uh, this is, you know, their opinions. They they were there, especially Bob. He was there. Yeah. Um, it's fascinating to hear. that The hair, um, that is incredible, how you do that. The hair? The hair, yeah. Oh, my. Well, thank you. You have to give me a lesson in hair. Doing hair, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, I oh, got it. Yeah, I um, think she's, she's coming along here. Most definitely. Amazing. What do yeah. what do people think in the chat uh, of this? Yes, Annette, how are you doing? Sorry, Larry, did I interrupt you? No, no, not at all, not at all. It's, uh, yeah. You know, I think I think we're getting we're we're, we're getting where I was thinking. Daniel yeah. says it looks like Patty. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? When you when you think what, what we've been able to see, yeah, what we can work out on those videos definitely has a look of Patty. Um, uh, let's put it this way. We've done some shows where when I finished, I go, I don't know about that one. Not very many shows, but. Yeah. Um, There's but, def uh, definitely some different looking ones out there. <laughs> uh, you know, it is um, interesting, isn't it? To, the, the pictures we've been doing that you've been doing. Um it's just amazing to see the differences uh, and some extreme ones. I mean, you know, there's no two ways about it. Um, oh, I know. It's 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 uh, it, some of them I've, I've really, you know, thought, huh, after I finished them. And then I, you know, I, but, you know, it's like the picture thing. I, I say, you know, when they talk about the blob picture. That doesn't mean the person didn't see what they see, claim they've seen. No. It just means they're just a terrible, terrible photographer. And there's a million of them out there. And it's so I, I, I tend to, you know, I, I'm not one to say, hey, you're, you're wrong. I'm not, I'm not going to say that. I'll draw it. And <laughs> well, you know, you're right. Um, picture, you know, is just, it's not, it's only part of the story, isn't it? it, it yeah. You're there and you're seeing these things and you know to some degree you don't know how people are translating what they're seeing i mean it could be you know for some people really shocking uh that they're not taking in or you know that's their perspective or that's what they're seeing in their mind i mean um to try and work out what they're seeing uh, even if you you know if you only get a glimpse of something as well, and you're trying to put the rest uh, to it. It must be very frustrating for people. Um, well, if they if they don't get excited about seeing something, yeah, well, you know when they were talking about how that night after they uh, they gotten that film footage, they they could they they stayed up late talking. I mean, how could you go to sleep after seeing and filming something like that? I mean, my goodness. So. Yeah. It's just human nature, and uh, I have to put, give Bob credit because when he said he rode his horse back in, in uh, uh, the film site area that night in the dark, I thought, didn't you even think about, you know, that thing's still out here? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and he said, no, I didn't really, uh, you know. I guess you just, you know, when you're in that moment and adrenaline and uh, you're in survival mode, I guess you just you just having to do uh, you just do what you do, don't you? People just Absolutely. adapt yeah. and 
and, and go with whatever, whether it seems rational or not, or, you know, really planned out. I mean, we all react differently. Uh, Deworm, uh, if you, yeah, send um, a note. I, I don't think you need to. I think, um, yeah, you can, yeah, put your address in the PayPal. I guess you can fit it all in, in a, in a message. Uh, if not, I'm sure Larry can email you uh, with that address. If he, if he can't get your email, uh, your, your address, sorry. So yeah. Yeah, everyone, um, put your address in the PayPal. Uh, I'll put the link up again in the chat. Uh, like I say, $10, it's not really a lot for what you're getting and it would really help Larry out um, with his animals, especially that one behind him that's Probably uh, after some food, is it? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at me. We'll see in a bit. Yeah. Um, I think this is a great little treat for yourself. As someone mentioned earlier about um, it should be on a T-shirt, that, that could happen. Um, it would look good, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would make a good T-shirt. I think so. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I like so. So, um, and I can't leave it alone. Well, that might happen, Nana Boss. That's a good idea. Uh, well, we'll talk about that. They're suggesting your drawing should be auctioned off. No, we could do that. We'll do that. Um, but for now, if I put the link in, I think I did. Uh, the link is in the description as well. If anybody, um, didn't get it in the chat, can't see it in the chat. Uh, yeah, that mom sticker. Um, it looks amazing, it really does. Thanks. And in the time you've done that as well, it, it's that process of when you know, like when we do talk to witnesses, mm -hmm. the time it takes to put it onto paper, just the, the outline. Um, can be the tricky thing can't it yeah that takes a while absolutely does so uh, uh, and then i you know because i could start right in on uh, taking it home it's what i call it you know getting the details put in uh it ma makes a big difference big difference and uh, she is a pretty thing oh yeah uh, for anyone who's who's coming a bit late, uh, this is the kind of progression that Larry talks about. You know, after a few days, like it says, takes it home and keeps playing with it and adding to it, and they really do come to life. I, I like how you add a bit of colour sometimes as well. Yeah, that's uh, uh, sometimes it just, it just calls for it. I'll be doing something. I'll say, nah, I need to add a little colour there, so. Because I've always been just a fan of the charcoal, and because uh, you can change it so easily and uh, deal and work with it, and basically, you know, make the subject come to life. Mm -hmm. So that one of Donnie Miller's really is with the creeks. They all do in a way. <laughs> it's a funny thing, isn't it? Yeah, it, it absolutely is. And knowing that some people have actually seen them, uh, it's hard to believe, although I believe everybody I've spoke to, um, it's, it's just so hard to imagine these things are out there, but they clearly are. And it just doesn't seem uh, right that we don't know, you know, it's not out there. Yeah. It's, but maybe, I don't know, how do you feel about this thing? Do you, do you want it just to be left alone? Or I would, yeah. I just seem to leave it alone. Like myself. I know it's got a really good reason. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm under the, I'm still one of the people that said, I don't care if they prove they exist or not, really. Tell you the truth, because um, when they do, all these types of shows will be over. <laughs> There'll be no more. So, 
Uh, say it, but, uh, yeah, all these Facebook pages and so forth. Goodbye. All these groups will be gone. Yeah, yeah, we'll be gone. We'll just so. know exactly what it is. I mean, that would, I mean, I can't see that day coming anytime. Not, no, I can't either. Um, we've got a request, Diane Fowler. Hi, Diane. Uh, she's asking, are you gonna, will you put, you know, Patty and sign it, Larry Batson? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that's the ES. Um, I think it's gonna be amazing when it when it ends when it when it ends when it, when it's finished. Yeah. Um, we've got twelve minutes left of this interview. Should we play it or should we put the link up for people to actually go over and listen to the whole thing? Um, whatever you want to do. Yeah, I'm open. Have you got a bit more doodling to do? Well, I play yeah, I'm, yeah, a little okay. bit, yeah. All right. Well, we'll 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 play the rest of of this um, interview, and then I will put the link up to it where you can go and listen to it. I doubt very many people have seen the, have have listened to this uh, because it was posted so many, like eleven years ago, uh, where Larry ha has his own uh, website, which I didn't know about because he's a dark horse, and. Oh. Um, and what did I say when I saw it? I said, well, 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 you have been busy. I can't yeah. believe the amount of interviews, uh, podcasts that you've got up on there. Uh, it's quite incredible. So I'm going to put that in and let people um, check that out as well. But first, I'll put a link in again uh, for the PayPal while we play the rest of this interview. I'm sorry to say that that's exactly what they did. That, uh, Bill Miller... Uh, worked on that picture a little bit and discovered that the horse shit had square edges. <laughs> and I suppose I hired a helicopter to come down with that backhoe, uh, to drop that backhoe in there and dig a hole to bury them. Across the sand, didn't I? Uh, that was they well, I haven't there. heard that one, but I've heard some wonderful stories. Well, well, wouldn't have uh, 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 Bob Harmonious been in that pile you had to bury? <laughs> 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 well, that's hey, that was a, a real mistake. You should have buried him at the time. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you. But anyway, uh, it it receives. You know, you know, it, it's not com. It was it was comical at the beginning, but it's it's kind of getting past that now. You know, when I heard. That they had some dingbat down in Florida trying to get a prosecutor to come up and prosecute me for for massacring five Bigfoot down there and buried them. So I thought, well, now wait a minute. You know, if these people actually are are making people believe this enough that they're trying to do that, I said, you know, I'm starting to take this thing serious. And I figured, if there's a prosecutor dumb enough to do that, then let him come on. I'll take care of it. Yeah, they have a whole different justice system in Yakima, don't they? <laughs> we call it cowboy justice up here, you know. And I won't even mention how it's handled. Yeah, well, yeah. If they've seen old Western movies, they already know how it's handled. So, well, you know, this kind of, you know, for a long time, when after the uh, National Geographic special, when Bob, you weren't talking, they said <laughs> about, the, yeah. about the guy in the suit. yeah. I, Bob Gimlin's not talking. <laughs> well, yeah, they said uh, this is what they said. They said Bob Gimlin refuses to give interviews anymore. He lives he lives in seclusion back in the mountains and refuses to give interviews. I lived the same place I always had lived for forty some years. Worked at the well, I didn't work the same job, but I worked right here in Yakima. Anytime anybody could talk to me, and I was always when people would call me on the phone, I'd I'd talk to them, whatever they you know, whatever they asked me, I'd try to be, you know, try to be civil about everything. And uh, but then they started coming out with these kind of accusations about me, and I thought, you know, these people are all lonely tunes, you know, they just they don't know where to stop. Well, it but, you know, I guess human beings are inclined to want to have some, what my wife calls it, 15 minutes of fame. So yeah. they come up with any kind of a wild and crazy story that they might get a little recognition from us. 
this is my opinion of, of what's going on. You know, I, I don't understand uh, if they got any common sense, why did it even come up to such crazy, sorry stuff? Well, it's, it's like I've said in, in, in my lectures when we discuss the film that, that, okay, let's just say that Jim Rogers did decide to build a suit. Let's just say that you get the suit done and you're both looking at it and going, that suit looks pretty good, but you need to put a pair of boobs on it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm right there. That is the evidence that that's a good looking set, but it needs some mammary glands. There you go. Yes, sir. <laughs> Did you notice that when you saw it that day, or was it after the fact? Well, well, I noticed something, but I wasn't sure what it was. You know, I never had that in mind anyway. I didn't because I didn't even know what to expect. When I did see it, I had no idea what really to expect. It all I'd heard about is what people have talked to me about, mainly what Roger talked to me about. Because whenever I had an opportunity to see Roger, he lived quite a little ways away from me. And, and about the only time I'd see Roger when I was riding colts and heading up into the hills uh, away from here and up past his place. And of course, I knew Roger quite well from earlier days, you know. And, and so I'd stop and say hello because I knew he'd been sick, real, real bad sick, you know. So I'd stop to see how he was doing, and and he'd say, "Well, Bob, let me throw my horse in, go with you and ride." And I'd say, "Okay, well, so we don't get your horse up here and we we'll load it and we'll go." So then if I was staying out for over a weekend, well, we'd sit around the campfire and he had these little cassette recorders, battery powered cassette recorders, and he'd play me these testimonials of different people who talked to him about, you know, and he also saw me plaster cast and. So, you know, I, I said, well, yeah, that's okay, Rog. I don't, I'm not really that much interested in it, but if you are, then that's okay. I'm nothing to do with listening around the campfire at night, you know. And so, so he did get me interested in it somewhat. Uh, and then he came out with his first book, and, and, and I had done some tracking for him earlier. He was, uh, was attempting to make a documentary of uh, some type of, uh, to generate enough funds to go on an expedition, and I, I never did know for sure where he planned on going or anything, but so I helped him some with that, and that's what that uh, the Argosy cover picture is, because I showed Appaloosa horses at the horse show at that time, and I did wear some costumes, and uh, the, and that's what that was on, oh, that, I uh, on that front page of the Argosy magazine. Wow. Well, I'll tell you, I, I found my copy in a garage sale, and I cherish it very much. Well, yeah, if it's in good shape, I hang on to it, because now, you know, there's, there's, there's not any more of them around. I mean, unless you happen to be lucky to find one. I happen to get one here. Well, I think I had one, and then a, a fellow up here gave me one of two or three years ago and with some other stuff. And uh, same way with Roger's books, you know, if you happen to have one of those, uh, right now, you know, they're pretty scarce and pretty hard to come by. John, who do you think is right now are the the people in the research field on Bigfoot that are that, that are the ones, the top the top people? One more time, I didn't hear what you said. Well, I, I was wondering, uh, what do you think? Who do you think are the top people right now doing research on this right now? Between them? John. Well, I don't, I don't know a lot of them, but I'd say that uh, you know, Dr. Meldrum is probably uh, my first thought, you know, that comes up, and then of course Bill Munns did a lot of research on the film footage itself, and uh, you know, just uh, people in that category that's just spending time doing it, you know, is, is the ones that. But uh, Dr. Meldrum was comes to my mind first, and then there's a few others down the line there that uh, that that I think, you know, is doing quite a bit of research. There's a gentleman up here uh, by the name of Colonel Jones. Uh, is is he goes up into an area called uh, uh, Bumping Lake area, which has been known to have uh, uh, Bigfoot early years ago. They had evidence there that they existed in that area. And there's been lots of activity up there, so 
he goes up there with a group or whatever, whoever wants to show up, you know, in different times. And then, then there's people out of California, the, the, the Bobo and the Tom Yamron, and, then, and that group down there, this, they're out as often as they can get out, I think. Right. And I talk to them quite often, and, and they're doing quite a bit of research. And so, uh, you know, uh, all up and down the West Coast here, there's quite a bit of, quite a bit of research going on. And I don't know all of them. Would you agree with that, John? Who, who do you think right now is yeah, the people doing, doing the good stuff? Well, there are so many people involved now that um, I, I certainly can't keep track of who's doing what. Um, Matt Moneymakers certainly is right up at the top there with his website and so on. That, that you know, he, we used to. Uh, think we were doing well if we rounded up from all sources a hundred reports in a year and uh, his uh, Bigfoot field researchers website probably gets ten times that and just on that one site so uh, you know that's one type of research and, and uh, there's all sorts of people uh, again a lot of them in the BFRO uh, using uh, Heat, heat sensing and, and uh, you know trail cameras on all, all, all sorts of high tech equipment, which by the way is uh, what um, George Schaller advised we should be doing. So these people are doing it. You know, it comes right down to in the end, somebody's got to shoot one or hit it with a car, or at least find a dead one. Or, all this effort is really not producing anything. That's right. Well, I want to tell both of you, all week when we were going to do this, that I received so many emails, and Bob and John, you do not have any idea how loved and respected you are in this field. The amount of emails that I received, they just said, this is fantastic. And I couldn't thank you enough for coming on tonight. This has been absolutely wonderful. I think anyone interested in this, the youngsters that have just started to read your books and so forth, and people that have been around it for many, many years, like myself. Uh, guys, tonight was just a complete pleasure. Well, thank you very much. It's sure a pleasure to hear John talk, and uh, I wish him well. And, you know, and, I, I neglect to call him as often as I, I should and like to, and I just get busy and don't do it. But I'm not really, I don't call a whole lot anyway, but thanks again. No, I'm the telephone person. <laughs> well, I am, because I bug you guys all the time. I admit it. That was a great interview. Um, guys, I'm going to put the link to that in the chat now. And you can all um, check it out at your leisure whole thing and check all the other um podcasts that larry's done how many have you done on there larry did you say i think around 160. oh and uh, a lot of the classic rock stars were on it uh from when i was in this in the 70s and 60s and yeah a lot of the classic rock stars in fact uh, we had people that, that worked with old john lennon and it was it was pretty amazing when when we were doing it. Yeah, I bet. Uh, I've got some good comments. Katie G says Larry Daniela's tonight show has been one of my favorites. Thank you. You remember we're, Katie G? Katie? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a tweaking. Oh, you tw no, Katie. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, and Donald Fuller says Larry, I sent twenty books, but only want the one picture. Okay. Um, and uh, another generous donation here. Larry sent 50 bucks, cheese freak, ginger snaps. But I only want one pick for me as well, bro. Cool, so that very is kind, a, very kind, yeah, definitely. Uh, and a shout out to the guys who donated last week, uh, made very generous donations to Larry uh, and his wildlife. Um, as you, as you know, you know, Larry's would go out to schools and colleges and things like that with his animals, 40 year plus wildlife educator uh, and COVID happened. 
and it took all that away. Uh, so Larry's doing his bit, trying to keep his amazing animals uh, alive, basically, and keep them in the comfort that they used to. That's right. So, um, and you work really hard for it as well. This is uh, incredible how you've done that. Okay. Everybody is impressed with that. I'll send uh, that tweet to send, you. Send a tweaked up version, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. It was faster on those computers. Yeah, I know. <laughs> on the worst. Uh, well, while we're waiting, we've got like 297 in. Can we get 297 likes, thumbs up? Everyone hit that little X there in the right hand corner and just give us a thumbs up. Uh, it'll really help the channel, support the channel. I would appreciate Yeah, you need to support this, folks, because uh, I've managed to see a lot of these Bigfoot things on, and not myself, but the whole Bigfoot Odyssey channel is pretty awesome. I'm just, uh, I'm just kind of just run along the for the ride with it. So, you know, we need to put lots of likes. Definitely. Thank you. Um, so have you sent it? Oh, you have sent it to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, quick. Quick. Wow. I think that was a good one tonight. It's a really good one tonight. Um, what am I doing? Okay, I'm just wait for that to download. Tell Strangeland he's got it. What's he said there? I'll buy the that drawing from tonight for two hundred dollars. You got it, brother. Wow, incredible! Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's really, really generous. Yeah. Um. So while I'm just waiting for that to upload, I do have an announcement. <laughs> Spook week for Halloween. It'll be our third year doing this. From the 26th to the 31st, we're going to have, uh, we're going to start off on the Tuesday night with Larry drawing, drawing a, a, a kind of cryptid. Hopefully, um, we, we've got that secured. But well, it's going to be a great week. Um, and I'll, I'll probably announce, or Kerry will. Uh, further into the next couple of weeks, who's coming on? It's going to be a great week, so I hope you're all going to uh, tune in for that. Um, right, let's get it. That is amazing. Those eyes. There she is. Yeah. Hi. I think. Um, I think it's realism. Definitely. I don't think that's a cartoon. I don't think it's a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> NFL will never live that down. Uh, well, some people don't think before they speak, maybe, or <laughs> put a lot of thought into um, the effort that it takes, uh, the skill and experience uh, that it takes to, to do stuff like this. This isn't just, you can literally see from start to finish, everybody, how this is developed. It's, it's layer after layer. Um, kids can't do this kind of thing. Uh, someone made a comment and called it childlike. I mean, that's just their opinion, but I think it hurt a few of us um, because this is talent, whether you, you know, if, you, if you've never drawn anything before, then maybe you wouldn't know how, how much it takes to, to to know this sort of stuff, to be able to put this down on paper and create something like that. So, um, yeah, I think it's amazing. I'm happy with it. I'm happy. I'll probably do a little tweaking before I send it off to Strangeland, but um, she is beautiful. Look in her eyes. Yeah. 
you know, there's there's something about some of these big foots that you draw where there is some, you know, I, I don't know whether it's how you do it, but you kind of give them that soft, kind look, even though they have the scary faces, but their eyes still have some, um, you know, in intelligence in them, some kind of feeling. Um, I want you to see that the, uh, all animals that I draw, uh, the, the eyes are the most important part of the drawing. Yeah. And they need to draw you in. And uh, they say a lot. So, you know, you know, all these drawings I do each week, I always start on the eyes because if the eyes aren't on, it's not going to happen. It's yeah. going to be a failure. Yeah. So it's, um, and uh, yeah, the blue eyed one was freaky, Donald. <laughs> Um, a lot of people have asked for T-shirts. Maybe we'll we'll put some together and uh, do some T-shirts as well. Um, we'll have a chat with Larry after yeah. the show. But um, yeah, lots of things are possible. Anything's possible. Uh, but Strangeland, yeah, he's excited to get that one um, on his wall next to his Christmas tree if it's still up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Um, Texas Jack, uh, Strangelands actually bought the original, but you can get a digital copy uh, for ten dollars if you email Larry. I'll put the link up again in the um, chat, and it's also in the description. Um, I don't have Larry's direct PayPal link, but if you use that email address. When you're in PayPal, you can pay it to that address and that'll take you to, is it wildlife education? Yeah. Something. Services. Uh, services, yeah. Yeah. And um, I will now put the link up to the interview that we just listened to with John Green and Bob Gimlin. Uh, I thought it was fascinating. I've never heard two guys talk like that in this subject. Um I learned a lot there actually. So that's the link there to Larry's uh, blog, uh, Talk Radio, um, and you'll find all his interviews there. I'll probably put a link to that as well in the description. Uh, but so, Larry, yeah, once again, that is amazing. Thank you. It was uh, it was a lot of fun tonight, and yeah. I'm I'm glad everybody uh, seemed to enjoy it. It makes me very happy. Good. Makes me so happy, I'm going to cry. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, what was going to say? Are you going to tweet that a little bit? I know you're going to tweet that a little bit. So, guys, yeah, it'll, it'll look a little bit more developed, a bit more depth. It, it'll look amazing. So, um, like I say, the links are in the description. Uh, we're going to go. We've had a great night. Thanks to everybody in the chat. Thanks for all the donations already and for all the comments and the support it's been great uh, larry thank you thank you watch the show again everybody yeah watch it again and don't forget to hit the thumbs up uh, i'm looking forward to next week that's going to be a good one with richard you bet it will be it will all right everyone uh until tomorrow night uh wednesday encounters that's right isn't it it's tuesday it's getting late. Guys, have a good night and I'll see you all soon. Bye.